good afternoon everyone today we will be discussing about the pandemic control what should be the future strategies we are hearing about pandemic x or some and uh, vaccine will come in 100 days okay but vaccine cannot be considered in a vacuum we have to see the how pandemics behave how they spread they spread across different countries and uh, how we get an idea of future strategies is by studying past pandemics and this pandemic has just finished this is the ideal time to study to do an introspection of what went right in the pandemic what went wrong in the pandemic and this looking back guides us how to go forward we just can't go blindly so we will just uh, give an overview what happened in the present pandemic to get an idea not to repeat the mistakes in future pandemics so this will be the scope of our discussion today evolution of the covid pandemic from inferences from ecological data because this pandemic spread all over the world so we have got comparative data from different continents so we will be comparing the three continents and then seeing ki whether what should be the strategy should it be same for the whole world or should we have regional strategy depending on the regional epidemiology then we will also see what was the impact of the mass vaccination so that it can guide us for future vaccination because main topic today is what should be future strategies so we have to see ki we have this was the first time in history of public health such a small scale vaccination was done at a such a short, short time and such a large scale so we will just have data we will just compare the data and most of the there are two things happened in this pandemic as far as uh, uh, evaluation was concerned one was by mathematical models other good thing was the real time data we were getting worldometer daily data country wise data we were getting so we will just compare the two to see which is more reliable for future strategies then we will just have a look at the covid 19 overview of the vaccines because this is a new technology first time it has come we will just see ki how this technology can be improved and uh, we will also recent papers are come which show some concerns about the vaccines so we will just see what more is required before in the next pandemic before we roll out we should uh, refine these vaccines we should make it more efficacious and more safer and vaccine is one thing it is something like a weapon in the armed forces you have got weapon you have got artillery you have got a you may have a nuclear bomb also some countries are having nuclear power so do we use it what should be a strategy do we use heavy artillery at the first instance so similarly in the fight against pandemics we should have a strategy whether we have a mass coverage or stratified coverage according to the risk stratification that is the epidemiological principle then whether it should be voluntary or mandates we will see whether mandates work or voluntary work there are some countries where which had mandates some countries did not have mandates but they were indirect coercion and research and efficacy and adverse events are required because these vaccines were developed at very short notice so we require and more importantly we have to improve particularly in our country and other developing countries the public health infrastructure without the proper public health infrastructure rushing new vaccines is like rushing super fast trains without proper tracks and uh, we have done that in this pandemic we have uh, the world medical community try to run a marathon at the speed of a sprint they went for eradication which is not this is the last stage of any communicable disease according to epidemiological principles they started from the word go they went for a sprint and went for eradication and whether in future pandemic shall we repeat those same methods or it should be different so taking a leaf out of geeta i am not a very religious person i am not a very spiritual person and this uh, geeta certain uh, shlokas or certain parts of geeta was pointed out to me by a professor johans bircher 
professor emeritus of Bern University, Switzerland. He was a hepatologist. He was a, and then subsequently he went into public health. So he was the one who pointed out me to me the phases of uh, anything which evolves uh, gunas. First there is tamas, that is darkness. Then there is rajas, that is blind passion, emotion. And after that there is calm, tranquility, logic, science, that is sattva. So now we are, the pandemic exactly followed this. Initially there was, nothing was known over the pandemic, darkness, panic. Then there was rajas chasing the virus at all costs, zero covid, lot of uh, human right violation, that is also rajas. Now is the time that we can think and do a audit of what went right and wrong in the pandemic. That is the way forward. So this is the Bhagavad Gita, verse 10, chapter 14. So sub sometimes goodness prevails, sometimes passion, sometimes tamas, depending on the stage and age also. At my age, mostly I am in sattva. At your age, you may be rajas it, or a uh, young child is uh, tamas, always like a snake gets, young snake gets, bites anyone. Then the king cobra sits like sattva. So it's not only human beings, it is also animal. A tiger, a lion, a king doesn't run after <laughs> praise. So tamas is darkness, pandemic of panic was reminiscent of a dark era. China became the pace setter in this marathon. China is always dark. It is behind an iron curtain, so it will be in perpetual tamas. And if the world follows China, we will not come out of tamas. Unfortunately, in this pandemic, we followed China. We succumbed to the worst authoritarianism from China and subsequently the market forces took over. You see, it was a relay race. First is authorism and the baton was handed over to the market forces. Both ways the, we are suffering because science got suppressed in this run for lethality of the tamas all continued. Lethality of the virus was grossly estimated to put fear and darkness in people's lives. Paper in Lancet estimated initial, one of the estimates was 20% mortality. This was taken from Italy nursing homes where the median age was 80 years. So that uh, inflated mortality was taken as a model. For model it went into that and Neil Ferguson of Imperial College predicted doomsday, Kiamat. So that was Thomas. Such distorted inputs went into mathematical models. Then comes the blind passion. By the fear, your passion is, you are provocated. The scientific community got provocated the stage. Logic and science were suppressed. A BMJ article mentions it. That the politics and power and other things took over. Sometimes with good intentions, but with lot of collateral harm. Blind rage towards virus changing it at all costs. Violence against elderly women and children increased because everybody went into lockdown. You can't live with a person very close for long, I mean, you have to separate from time to time. So this was psychologically abnormal. Violence increased, familiarity breeds contempt. So, and too much of separation also breeds depression. So both ways, anyone who was <coughs> got just artificial positive went into isolation, into depression. Normals were huddled together. So, some suffered from depression, others suffered from violence, fights and other domestic conflicts. For elderly, life is about quality, physical contact, social recreation all interrupted. That may have caused more loss. Blind restrictive measures tend to increase deaths in the poor to save lives of the rich. This was a commentary in Lancet and we have seen it in our country. The rich people did not suffer, the laptop class did not suffer. It is the poor people who suffered. Blind, uh, increased death in the poor. We saw migrants walking, some collapsing, some dying. So the rich people benefited. And the, so this is the harm of the restrictive measures. It was actually social distancing. 
दो इट वॉज फिजिकल डिस्टेंसिंग इट वॉज सेट कि सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग स्टेगमाटाइजिंग मेक इट फिजिकल बट एक्चुअली इट वॉज सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग द रिच बिकेम रिचर एंड द पुअर बिकेम पुअर so this is just to have a small break this is uh, happened everywhere where you have tamas you have fear you close your eyes this is can anyone guess who is this this is famous cricketer actually it was from earlier to my generation also you people are in ipl and other things this was a cricket captain of india i have given you a hint this was a cricket captain before nawab patodi now not ck naidu yeah he was a ck naidu he was a captain ck naidu uh, he was nari contractor what happened to him nari contractor he that time cricketers never used to they we had no helmets there were no helmets so they just used to go bareheaded and the west indies had the fastest bowler hall and griffith so thus the name of hall and griffith used to create uh, tamas in the minds of the batsmen that it was like a new virus they were they were like new virus so in the west indies tour nari contractor went to bat against griffith and griffith bowled a short pitched ball and he closed his eyes perhaps tamas out of fear he ducked into the bouncer and he had a severe head injury so he had to be escorted out of the field and he luckily he survived but he never played cricket again so this was uh, thomas so this can happen same thing happened in the pandemic the world community closed the eyes one should see you know epidemiology who is affected where it is affected who are the risk groups that is the then accordingly one can develop the strategies so this is the initially first 3 months into the pandemic john yonets and jay bhattacharya of stanford university did zero surveys and they found for every case there were more than 20 30 cases subclinical asymptomatic that increases the denominator so the two infection fatality rate was 0.5 up to 69 years of age 99.5% people were surviving even up to 69 years of age and now after the omicron came the survival the infection fatality up to 65 is 0.03 to 0.05 i mean at my age i am 69 any infectious disease will kill me <laughs> more easily than covid i mean even typhoid if you see the data of typhoid even with treatment the fatality of typhoid is 1 to 3% you get so much more than covid without treatment because nobody bothers about typhoid it is in poor and developing country sanitation and so this is and in the young people this is the wuhan virus you can imagine subsequent strains are much milder so this was the original virus the up to 19 years children were almost at zero risk so more than 1000 time difference between a covid in the child young and in the elderly and above 70 years the mortality was 3 to 5 to 10% this is if you see papers there are papers which show even in a person who is bedridden who is frail in the elderly nursing home even the common cold virus has a mortality of 3 to 5% aspiration pneumonia and other things so it is nothing very unusual so if we had kept our eyes on the ball and seen this data we could have a better calibrated response causing much less harm another thing which we observed initially in the pandemic was that earlier of course it was well uh, established ki higher the age higher the mortality another thing which we saw in our hospital also and from other reports from colleagues most of the serious cases were very obese and overweight so we started plotting the data our students only we started plotting the data and this with the help of icer pune we could uh, identify this is the data we plotted of almost 180 countries and we could uh, plot here we see the right side of the cube right and anterior side of the cube represents the higher age and higher body bmi so there is a clustering of uh, deaths 
uh, towards higher BMI indicating obesity tendencies and higher age, age and then subsequent data ecological data indicates that <coughs> obesity is a bigger predictor of severe covid and death than even age. There are two outliers this is a some table we have tried to put in one slide. So, we have chosen countries from three continents northern hemisphere the Asian and the African continent and we see at the start of the year this is the first year is the start of the uh, pandemic May 2020 few months into the pandemic if you see the northern hemisphere had except for Brazil, Brazil started well subsequently after 2 years this is 220 data 2 years it sort up and uh, Germany and all to Sweden and these are the northern hemisphere 3 digits mostly except for Belarus maybe less reporting and if you see the Asian countries deaths per million it was in 2 digit 1 digit and African countries had the least African countries had the least mortality at the beginning of the pandemic and even after 2 years the same difference persisted. The northern hemisphere Brazil caught up very fast and then the Asian countries had 3 digit and the African countries had still lower except for South Africa. Now, if you see the median age, median age we would think that Japan will have the highest mortality because it had the highest age. Japanese are the uh, longest life expectancy even longer than the European countries, but it had very less mortality just 3 digits after two, 2 years when others were having 4 digits and another this stands out Japan stands out because it has the highest age but lean people because the BMI is given here this is the BMI you see up around 60 for the northern hemisphere including Brazil. Brazil have a younger population 33 but it had a high BMI it had a very high mortality. Japan had a Japan had a lean 28 BMI compared to the uh, western hemisphere which is above 60 more towards the Asian. So, it has a it had a lower Japan had a 3 digit mortality per million. So, this is uh, interesting and here is the uh, vaccination coverage Africa had very little coverage, but it had the least mortality. So, in spite of the vaccination coverage they continue to have high mortality 10 to 20 times more compared to the Asian and African countries the northern hemisphere had mostly because of the obese obesity itself reduces lung function and obesity is a marker of other comorbidities. So, this is uh, what I was pointing at these are the northern hemisphere this is the Japan is the highest age, but mortality is much less than the northern hemisphere to, uh, beginning of the pandemic few months and 2 years afterwards it persisted. This is the mortality in Japan and this is the age uh, overweight much less compared to this. These are the overweight people and this and if you see South Africa is having a high BMI and it has among the African countries it has got the highest mortality in spite of a higher vaccination 32 percent vaccination compared to 10 13 in other African countries. So, more than the vaccine the difference in the obesity and general health which obesity denotes as a surrogate marker of it can be taken as a surrogate marker of general health. So, general health is more important see this is what I was trying to say South Africa and include Egypt also Egypt had also slightly more than the other African countries not as much as the year though South Africa is more urbanized. So, there may be more population movement compared to Egypt. So, obesity as we see from the data subsequent studies at individual level also had established obesity a systematic review and meta analysis that obesity increase the risk of severe disease almost uh, 3 times or 2 times compared to a year. So, almost 60 70 percent vulnerability increased with obesity. 
So, now we just see what was the uh, we are if we are thinking of future strategies of vaccine, what was the past pandemic how it unfolded mass vaccination. According to models, according to models, initially also model went off the track. If you see, we should have stopped believing in models after Neil Ferguson's year went off the track. But for evaluating vaccines also models again predicted that 20 million lives were saved. This is a paper in Lancet. They are based on mathematical modeling. What happens the inputs? You see different countries varies, the population density varies, highly dense population they have a very fast community transmission. So, by the fast community transmission and they have a very lower age. So, these two factors increase the herd immunity faster before the vaccine can be rolled out. You see this communicable disease like uh, respiratory infection, influenza, even SARS 2, it has got an incubation period of 3 to 4 days, 5 days. It spreads from person to person whereas vaccine takes 2 doses, 14 days then after few months. So, by the time vaccine roll out it has spread and by the time you give the vaccine it has mutated. So, it is just like trying to hit a moving target or chasing a deer in the forest. Sita Paran Ogiata, deer in the forest. So, real world then we will see real world what happened because as I said the worldometer was in the public domain and the uh, my world in data or something can give you the vaccination coverage also. So, all department or students compile the data over the two years vaccine one year before the vaccine rollout what was the trend Va one year after the vaccine and this data is from the public domain I would encourage all of you who are watching to go and do your own research from the public domain. It is not rocket science it is easier than modeling. Modeling is like a black box this is plain data 7th class boy can also understand it. Models can give you tamas but this can give you sattva if you see if you have got real world data. Then besides this data which we had done very as a, in a simple manner there are a, a paper published in European Journal of Epidemiology it showed the pattern of uh, transmission before and after vaccine rollout and it compiled data from <coughs> 68 countries and 2947 American counties and this paper is here for your reference you can do the research and this paper did not find any correlation between the vaccination coverage and the transmission impact on transmission. There was no correlation you expect that if the if you have a higher vaccination coverage your cases must be less. So, this paper did not find any association from 68 countries and 2947. So, very large this is actually real time population data. So, this all this we have to keep in mind when we are going for future strategies. So, these are some of the graphs which our students have compiled. So, this is the uh, we start with Japan. Japan was very interesting. Japan was al uh, almost going to have the Olympics also if you remember it said we do not have COVID and it did not have COVID. It only had all the COVID after the vaccine rollout. This red semicircle shows the vaccine rollout in April 2021. If you see left side is one year before the vaccine rollout there is no baseline cases. After the vaccine rollout few months all the cases and peaks started to happen in Japan. In fact, I remember on a panel there was a Japanese panelist uh, when the vaccine was about to roll out. I told that panelist here look at your data aapke to hai nahi. you do not have covid in your country why you want vaccine he was surprised. He could not un understand me then I sent him the data and he was very fascinated and then they went for vaccination and then they started having cases we do not know why because another thing what happens is that as I said the uh, transmission uh, is going faster than the yeah, you are not able to catch up. Other thing is some virologists say that there is fast mutation vaccine escape. So, these may be the may be the reasons we do not know we require research in future strategy we require research and development. This is the death then there is a claim ok transmission it does not stop but it prevents death it may be at individual level 1 to 1 that but at the population level are we convinced this is the data again in the public domain left side is deaths from covid before vaccination and right side you see the peaks are higher here than the 
pre vaccination era. So, population level data actually they can be many fallacies, ecological fallacies, but at least it is giving a, some clue or some red signal or orange signal ki we have to really know whether how much vaccine is working. Cost will lagta hai na, forget about side effects, cost and if we are not getting the outcome, is it public health economics? That is the thing which we have to keep in mind. This is Israel. Israel was the lauded for rolling out vaccination very fast after vaccination, second booster, third booster. These are the picture. This is the deaths in Israel. It happened earlier, but after vaccination peak and the highest peak, it continued. This is Israel. Australia. Australia is a very good example. It had very strong. It did not even let that tennis player enter. Jovic, Novik, yeah. Novak, no vaccination, Novak, huh? Jovak. So, whatever it is, no cases after vaccination rollout, maybe vaccine, they say 3 months, 6 months, keep on taking booster, but cost a poor country like us should have a different strategy, we can't afford it. And it is not showing any good results from the population data. Maybe case to cases are different. This is the cases in Australia. The deaths also, more deaths after the right side then left side right side is after vaccine rollout singapore again singapore controlled very well small country but after vaccine rollout it had number of boosters but still the cases continued historical controls these are known as historical controls before and after again singapore deaths you see deaths in singapore Malaysia, same story. Again, deaths also, all the deaths on the right side. Population data, uh, not my opinion, I am not giving opinion. It is for you to research again to verify whether I am right or wrong or my students have been fooling me, I don't know because I can't uh, use the computer so well, but you find out I will get back on them. Korea, South Korea. Cases, deaths, these are deaths in South Korea. Taiwan, cases. So, country after country, same. Taiwan, deaths. Sri Lanka, I was following Sri Lanka very closely because it is a neighboring country. I was following Bangladesh also, Sri Lanka. All, all they were, in fact, Bangladesh uh, all stabilized very fast because the population density may be higher than. See, they were before the vaccine rollout, there were very much less cases compared to India. And now, maybe island countries so or movement can be restricted easier. Even you see deaths in Sri Lanka. Today only I got a message from a Sri Lankan person, ki, show me the data. Well, he heard me somewhere, so then I had just sent him the data. This data only I sent him. <laughs> I said, you tell your government to sue the vaccine companies. So, this is uh, Nigeria. So, this is a South African country which, uh, which hardly had any vaccination. So, some deaths, some peaks, so it went as it went, like all pandemics go. But uh, in some countries, after vaccination, deaths increase. We don't know why. We, there may be many reasons. We don't know. I am not. I, am, I can. Epidemiologist is the least uh, educated person. He can count 1 to 100 and then. And uh, he just counts and displays the figures. What is happening? Uh, let the virologist say or the other people say. So, uh, I am the least educated person. So, Nigeria also. So, what is the lessons learned from the data for future strategy for vaccine? Oh, look, vaccine is not in a vacuum. Whether you need it or not, that is the public health. You have to decide whether you really need a vaccine or there are alternative measures or they may be selective or focused or stratified depending on the risk. Elderly may jada hai to do. Just earlier what happened, the influenza vaccine was given to nursing home people. So, same can be done for COVID vaccines. Give it selective or give it on the ear of the personal physician. Instead of blindly, it is something like giving broad spectrum antibiotic not knowing what the hell is happening. Like you get broad spectrum activity, the vaccine antibiotic resistance goes up. Here we may be getting vaccine resistance. Here we may be uh, promoting new strains. So, we just do not know what is happening. Overweight 
bigger risk factor as we have seen from outliers like Brazil and Japan. Despite different strategies and vaccination, the mortality gap remained the again the continents remained the same. Future strategy review of mass vaccination can be considered. We can give selective. Then what are the vaccines available? Because we have to develop them further. MRA technology is a very promising technology. It got the Nobel Prize also. Must be good then. Brutus was an honorable man. <laughs> Mark Anthony Brutus. So, mRNA vaccines, it, it, in fact, I was reading it may have a lot of applications in medicine for cancer and other things and for certain diseases. But we are in a hurry, we have to just see how best to utilize it. It is something like a strong weapon. As Sun Tzu said, if you do not know how to use a strong weapon, you do not know the disadvantages, you do not know the advantages also. So, we should consider both. All strong weapons have disadvantages as well as advantages. Then mRNA vaccine, how it works? It instructs the host cell to produce the spike protein. It programs it, the host cells produce the spike protein. Then other vector vac vaccine is the material from COVID-19 virus is transmitted by viral vector on an adenovirus, they piggyback into an adenovirus which give instructions to make the cell S protein. Again similar to mRNA, slight modification here it is through an adenovirus vector the viral particle goes and instructs the host. In fact, uh, the, uh, this uh, vector vaccine also ultimately converts into mRNA in the host cells. And this is uh, the technique of AstraZeneca which is uh, marketed as Covishield in India. It should be of special concern to us because the majority of our people got the Covishield and Johnson and Johnson, Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Traditional vaccines are inactivated viral particles, that is a co-vaccine, Bharat Biotech. <laughs> so that, that is traditional, so we are okay, traditional. Now newer things we require more data. Uh, next slide, I think got stuck. So, what are the concerns about the side effects? Recently only there is a paper I think 2-3 days back. This is the paper is the largest 99 million cohort of 99 people who are vaccinated. So, biggest cohort of all COVID vaccines which includes mRNA as well as uh, this uh, uh, adenovirus vector vaccine. So, these are one, one, uh, one and a half times increase in the rates of uh, myocarditis, pericarditis. Gillen Barre syndrome, then viral vector vaccines, AstraZeneca, Covishield, clotting disorder, stroke, and uh, myocarditis, pericarditis also. So, particularly this AstraZeneca or Covishield had a bigger problem among younger people. So, in most European countries, they suspended the use of AstraZeneca, particularly below 50 years. So, there, uh, these are some of the concerns, and so we require future strategy should do research first of these vaccines with this new technology to make it really safe and to really weigh the cost benefit. There is some risk is there in all medical procedures, even non-medical procedures there are risk. The roof can fall anytime, you can meet with a traffic accident. In fact, we get more people killed on the roads than by anything. Even best efforts of doctors cannot match the road traffic accidents. So, that is there, but is the risk worth it? So, that has to be, for that we require good data. But a matter of concern is excess death since past 2-3 years and particularly among young adults below 40 years in age in many highly vaccinated countries. They have data from uh, USA where uh, after mandates uh, about 80 percent, they have data from Australia also which had very little COVID prior to vaccination because then there is also a hypothesis that this deaths may be due to long COVID. But Australia is again a good country to and New Zealand which had hardly negligible COVID, 1000 cases or cases. After the vaccine rollout there is a 60 percent increase in cardiac events in 20 to 40 years. So, that, that should be a and there are post-mortem studies, there are other studies, there are um, uh, that uh, PET studies which show some myocarditis in the vaccinated. There are studies from thyroid cohort 
which shows that myocarditis. So there is a biological plausibility that it hits the heart. Some rare, maybe rare to rare, but in the young people, the COVID death is also rare to rare. So you have to balance the two. So these require investigations and uh, including autopsy studies. There were a lot of fear in UK about the excess death. Now they have a uh, office of national statistics. They before study said, ki, no, no, it's okay. They, they uh, again, uh, excess death, they made some mathematical uh, models and say, there is no excess death. <laughs> because in that mathematical model, they put some things, which many people may not understand what they are putting. They said, ki, nahi, aging population, year population, uske liye, uh, hum usko control karenge uske liye model mein. A model mein kya jata hai, wo black box ban jata hai. So, now they have declared officially ki no excess death in UK. But actual data was showing excess death. And you see, another thing in pandemic, if pandemic has occurred, most of the vulnerable have already died, unfortunately. So, those who have remained are studier. At this post pandemic, if they excess death, common sense thing says that we should be concerned. Whatever the model says, models have failed up in the past, models are going to fail us now also. So, future strategy, more research on safety and efficacy, need for robust adverse events following immunization, particularly in our country. You should have a health services, who is the doctor there who will say this is adverse event, the committee will come after one week, very difficult, no evidence. No post-mortem studies, no autopsies. Mass vaccination or risk-based approach? These are the questions I would like to ask the audience. Shall we, have, uh, shall we vaccinate young and children without comorbidities? Now in USA, they are vaccinating up to six months of age. Is it science? Is it logic? Is it common sense? In our country, is it okay to vaccinate those who have recovered from natural infection? Now there are studies which show natural infection gives 13 to 27 times better. So, shall we vaccinate people who have recovered from natural infection? These are the questions, these are the strategies we should keep in mind for the future. And coronaviruses have cross immunity also. All countries have so many circulating coronaviruses. Then, shall we impose vaccine mandates or offer it on voluntary basis? Supreme Court of India has turned down vaccine mandates. My class fellow had put a PIL, Dr. Jacob Pulial. So, and after the PIL, the uh, government said, we have never mandated. I mean, it is not mandate. I tell you, I am no longer HOD, but as a HOD, I tell you, you buy my book, read from my book, attend my class. You will attend because I will fail you. But I would say, nah, I did not uh, make it compulsory for you. So, there are many ways, these are called nudges, these are psychological technique, nudge, these are nudges. Shall we blindly follow the West, ignoring the local epidemiology in our country? In our country, 97% per, uh, of our population are below 70 years of age and below 70 years of age, 0 0.03 to 0 0.05 as on today, Omicron variant. So, even if all get affected, death will not be more than 5 lakh. There was an editorial in uh, Lancet and WHO also said that India is hiding deaths. They are 3 times, 10 times dead than 5 lakh. I wrote to the Lancet with this data. You see the zero surveys. You see the, yeah, you apply it to the whole population. Our population more than only 3 percent people are above. And those 3 percent are very sturdy people because they have survived all the Adverse conditions, survival of the fittest, they are survivors, so does not matter to them. It did not publish my letter. That way Indian General Medical Research is more sporting. So, to conclude, who is this last, anyone who is this, I will give you a hint. He was a mathematician philosopher. He was a mathematician, he was a philosopher, but he got the Nobel Prize in Literature. Anyone? He is Bertrand Russell, English. Bertrand Russell said that humans pass through three stages of tussle. First tussle is against the environment. That is uh, 
disasters, infections, zoonoses uh, are surrounded. After he conquers the environment, the person starts fighting with his neighbors. India, Pakistan, Ukraine and all. And uh, even the USA, Russia for many years. And uh, now of course we have got a gain of function research also. This is also established now that this was a gain of function research. Humans after conquering nature they want to conquer there. And once you conquer the enemy also, like uh, USA, Russia used to keep fighting. Now there was a cold war, then the USSR got dismantled. So there is only one world and world world the man turns against self, lifestyle. Nothing to do body, boring, your alcohol, narcotics, the western countries, obesity, fast food. So, population approach, lifestyle, obesity, this is man against self. You are doing self harm and you want the vaccine to save you. Because your vulnerability as we have seen from the data is more from your obesity which makes you vulnerable even to communicable disease. Earlier we used to teach that obesity is a risk factor for non-communicable disease. Now we know it is a vulnerability for communicable disease as well. So better be fit. Let there be vaccine. Vaccine is an extra guard here. Yeah. Nowadays like Nari contractor did not have a vaccine. Vaccine means he did not have a helmet. Nowadays batsmen do have a helmet. That does not mean as a helmet worker or bouncer ko aise He still has to use his skills and practice. So just because you get a vaccine does not mean you neglect your general health. Vaccine may not save you if it does at all. So, so Avi, what happened in India is educative. We are going like Brazil, fast developing and particularly middle class. If you see the poor did not suffer much during the first wave. First wave hit or slums, Dharavi. Second wave may have suffered because they got natural immunity. Second wave it hit the middle class who were sitting in the laptop class. And they were that Zomato class, laptop plus Zomato, Johnson, Dipu. So, <laughs> so Zomato class, so that uh, they hit, so therefore there was slightly more impact. Fortunately, we have a long way to go to catch up with the West, but we are not leaving any efforts. So, this is called primordial prevention, that before we reach that, we require education for or a good lifestyle. Now, Sun Tzu, Chinese virus, Chinese philosopher. He was a, who was Sun Tzu? Sun Tzu was a Chinese warrior, 600 BC or something. He was a warrior who said the art of war teaches us not on the likelihood of the enemy is not coming, but on our readiness to receive him. Not on the chance of not his not attacking, but rather the fact that we have made a position unassailable. How we make a position unassailable? We have seen the past pandemic by poor health people suffered more, obese people suffered. Age we can't do anything, we have to go. So that also we have to reconcile that we are mortals. We need not cling on. So this is the way to prepare for pandemic X by having, we don't know, how do we prepare blindly for what we don't know? But these are the things which we already know, that this is killing, obesity is killing, comorbidities are killing. This we have to, this is what uh, we would uh, like to suggest, that vaccine should be used judiciously like a weapon. I have a weapon for self-defense, I have a revolver, armed forces have a police have, does not mean it goes as a chalata pichkari jaisa. So that is what we are, do we do that with vaccine which we did last time? We should be very, very judicious, target and maximum benefit. Control of obesity, biggest challenge, obesity creeping in, as I said, Brazil, lack of public health infrastructure challenge. Another problem is lack of public health infrastructure, particularly we are all concentrated in the urban areas, metros, all, we do not have good primary health centers, good sub centers, so that is required. Then Indian movies have lot of philosophy. This is from Agnipat. The bad man in Agnipat says, villain, 
like Shakespeare also had philosophy. So, uh, similarly when we are faced with a virus which is going to outlast humanity, this is a saying, apna usul kehta hai, jab dusman ki umar bad jati, to usse dosti kar lo, apni umar bhi bad jati hai. This is one of the characters, I think, uh, Amrish Puri or someone tells the policeman who is very eager to fight him. So, he wants peace. Translated, stop chasing the virus, else we will fall off the click like an elephant. Similarly, the virus is trying to be friends with us. Why? By the mutants are milder, live and let live. So, if you try to make peace with the virus, your life also extends by healthy lifestyle rather than fighting the virus piecemeal. Because it's, there is not one virus, yeah? the world is full of viruses. Virologists will be discovering. So every time we will go into a panic, so overall health or position unassailable like Sun Tzu. So this is what uh, all I had to convey. These are the references. This uh, PowerPoint will be available in your archives. So you can go through, cross check my interpretation. My I may have wrongly interpreted also, but what all I have put are from the standard re good references and good data. And for any feedback, for correcting me, I would like to be educated throughout. These are my, you can communicate with me at this mail. Thank you so much. Any questions?